It's early morning in downtown Hartford, Connecticut, and as you can see by the looks of intensity and competitive apprehension in the steely-eyed faces of these motorsports diehards, a great racing event is about to unfold here on the city streets of Connecticut's capital city. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, start your engines! Why, it's the fifth annual Carrier Hartford Grand Prix for the benefit of junior achievement an event that draws a host of local corporate racing teams competing in equally prepared go-karts. The drivers and teams combine a curious mix of fierce rivalry, good-natured whimsy, and community commitment. Oh, it's a great fundraising activity. It's good community relations. Uh, we're here really to support junior achievement and, uh, and uh, show support for our community and uh, have a good time. Well, it's interesting. Everybody comes here thinking that this is just for fun and it's a little way to raise some money, but then when you get down and dirty, everybody's out there trying to find an edge, tuning up the car. Uh, they're pretty specific about how, how your car is going to get tuned, so they really go through it with a fine tooth comb. Um, our plan is we're going to go wide on the outside. Everybody wants to go low on the inside and try and get the corner. We're going to take it wide on the outside. Tom Argy of TCM Racing is in charge of all the racing operations, and he outlines the event's format. I, brought, I was brought into these with my group, the TCM uh, Racing Group, to design the race courses around the country so they would suit the cars. Uh, the cars are Mako production cars, but they're, they're different cars in other cities. They're governed vehicles, they're really for recreation use, but by being uh, perfect in tech, by setting the RPMs, the, the template around the tire for the tire circumference, the gearing, everything, we make the racing very equal. So it's kind of like Formula Ford racing at another level. Basically, the cars are a basic uh, 60s style race vehicle. They are a go-kart, a uh, racing kart uh, on a, a detuned level. They run a five-horse Briggs and Stratton engine. We do, as I said, run the governor to slow the cars down slightly. That's more just to keep the things equal. Uh, otherwise, the cost would escalate and it'd be a little difficult to run a charity there. Just like big league racing, the cars get plenty of race. In fact, some teams representing a host of Hartford area businesses brought in actual race mechanics and setup people to increase their chances of victory. Practice, qualifying, heat races, and then the grand finale 50 lap feature, it was indeed a glut of mini motorsports on the street course, complete with tire barriers and corner marshals. And it's an event that has come a long way. This event annually, this is our fifth event, it gets bigger every year. We have 35 cars racing this year. Uh, you know, it started a couple of years ago where we couldn't even get the tires that outline the race course. And now we've got, you know, thousands of tires. We've got 40 plus volunteers out here today. Uh, it's turned into a huge event. And as in any kind of auto racing, there were what are referred to in the business as sponsor pots. Thank you to Texaco and all the help they've done and the support that they've given us that we now finish the race instead of being halfway through the qualifying rounds and stopping. During qualifying, each car posts a one lap time to set the grid for the feature. Then there are heat races to round out the field. Before the main event, there's another practice session. And to listen to some of the team leaders, you'd swear you were at a Winston Cup race. We're running a little problem here with mixture adjustments and uh, the tech temp people cut down our RPM and then it doesn't run as smooth. So we have to run out and test and check our mixture and make sure we're running without breaking up the engine. With all the teamwork we saw on the pits and street level paddock, we could see where this event, along with raising money for junior achievement, helped to exemplify JA's overall mission. Today, in, in terms of the business world, is totally different. Uh, norm at one point, we all used to work on our own in our own little offices. These days, kids are learning how the, the new effort of team building is very important, where they always have to work on the strengths of another person where they don't necessarily have that strength, as well as you know, beefing up that individual's weaknesses with their own strengths. So they're learning how to work in a, in a collaborative effort that they normally wouldn't get an experience in that, that respect if, in a normal classroom. Finally, the field for the 50-lap end-of-the-day enduro lined up. Granted, the racing speeds of these cars are not blinding, but if you make a mistake, an unplanned trip into a tire barrier is not out of the question. And just to make things a bit more dramatic, there's a mandatory driver change at the midway point. You might not be able to see the gritty expressions of deep concentration behind those track helmets, but these merchants of speed are here for one reason, that trip to victory lane. 
When the racing is finally over, the award ceremonies give special recognition to the class and overall champions, who this year included Bank Boston, General Electric, and Pratt and & Whitney. So circle those calendars and make plans to throw yourself into the fray in Hartford, Connecticut next year, when the Carrier Hartford Grand Prix flags off. Amateur drivers, a tricky street course, and visions of racing immortality. It gives you some degree of comfort watching these neophyte nuvolaris dart and dice inches from each other and oblivion that Hartford is America's insurance city.